Hello my friend, are you ready to get geeky today? Because I am ready to get geeky today. We are going all up into the Sephora Favorites Holiday Must Haves Kit. We're getting all up in its business. We're gonna be talking about the value of this, the true value of this kit. We're gonna be going into ingredients, what you're going to be getting in this, how they perform on my face. They're all on my face right now. So much information to help you decide whether this is worth your $54 or not, because $54 is a lot of money. So hang tight, we are getting into it right now. But we cannot. We cannot start this review with all of this already on because you got to get, you know, my impressions as I put it on. So let's go ahead and go to about half an hour ago my time right now. Whew. By the way, thank you so much for watching the one that I did on the Sephora Holiday Lip Kit. Y'all loved it so much, it made me want to buy another one. I had so much fun making that video, and I had fun getting ready to film this one for you today. I have lots to tell you, so let's jump into it. I think one thing that's important is to see what the products look like inside the box, not just the photo on the front. So this is what it looks like on the inside, and you can see some of them do look like they are quite small. When we discuss these, we're going to start with the skincare products and then we're going to move all the way up in application to the all-nighter setting spray by Urban Decay. So let's start with the Paula's Choice 2% Liquid Exfoliant. This is a one ounce bottle. Now Sephora does sell this in three different sizes. This is the smallest. They also sell a four ounce bottle and they sell an eight ounce bottle. This bottle, if you buy it on its own, is $13. The medium one at four ounces comes out to $8.50 per ounce, but you're going to have to pay $34 up front to get that. But if you really want a lot of this product, you can get the eight ounce product, which I can't even imagine how giant that bottle is. It ends up being $6.13 per ounce, which is less than half the cost of what you're paying per ounce for just the $13 for the one ounce bottle here. But trying it in something like this, I think is a really good idea. But this product, I want to warn you, is not for everyone. It says on here that it's for all skin types, but really and truly, this was made for oily and acne prone skin. It is a very simple ingredient list, which I like because when you have an extensive ingredient list and you have a reaction to it, there's really no way, well, there's never a really a true way to know what you're allergic to in it. But the more ingredients, the more interaction there is, the more that things can get complicated for people with sensitive skin. So this has a relatively basic ingredient list, not a whole lot going on there, but it's very effective ingredient list. We have butylene glycol, which is a humectant to pull water into the skin. And then we have the quote unquote magic ingredient in here, which is salicylic acid. That's your BHA chemical exfoliator. The job of that product is think about it like your pores have need vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> there's all this like gunk and dirt and dead skin cells and stuff like that inside your pores. The BHA chemical exfoliator is specifically designed to clean out the pore lining. So when that is all cleaned out, your pores may appear a bit smaller. You may have less oil production. You also may have less acne. Also in here is green tea leaf extract. And that is one of the most researched skincare ingredients that is plant-based. It is of course an antioxidant. It also has anti-inflammatory properties in it, and it also is an antimicrobial, which is very good for acne-prone skin. So let's talk about actual application of this. Uh, Polish Choice has sent me this quite a few times, and I don't typically have acne-prone skin, but you may notice I got a little situation going on over here because I'm getting some hormonal acne because I believe the great pause is beginning. <laughs> so, you know, I've got a couple of friends over here. So I'm very thankful to have this because I do know that it works. It works for a lot of people in the community and it has worked for me in the past and I didn't currently have any. So I'm very thankful to have this little bottle. The texture of this is like water. It is just a pure watery liquid. It dries down just like water. I can't smell it. Now that it's dried down, I can't smell it, but I could smell something when I first put it on. 
it's a little bit of a planty scent of all things, but then when it dries down, you can't smell it at all. It's only on the initial first application. There's no stickiness to it at all. It just dries down completely and it's almost like you didn't even put it on. Now I do wanna give you a little bit of a tip, but I wanna preface this by saying this has not been approved by any doctor. This was just me improvising, but it worked. So I did not realize you could get cysts on the labia. Had no idea, incredibly freaking painful. Long story short, I got one, I went to my OBGYN, she ended up injecting it with, you know, numbing stuff that didn't work. It was incredibly painful. It was one of the most horrible experiences I have ever had in my entire life as far as pain goes. Decided I never want to go through that again. Before I had gone to her, I tried sitz baths. I tried all different kinds of things because it was incredibly painful. Fast forward to I got them again after she like burned the inner lining of my pore. And I mean, it was freaking awful. Anyway... I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm desperate, I'm in pain. I put a little bit of this on a Q-tip, put it on the cyst, and I am not kidding you, within 15 minutes, the pain was starting to go away. It was unreal, absolutely unreal. I ended up giving, I had an extra one of these that Polish Choice had sent me, and I actually gave it to my sister-in-law. Like, I, I tell everybody in my personal life about this. I hesitate to say it on YouTube because, again, it is not, it's not approved by anybody. <laughs> but... It worked really well. I had no other issues after that. And it's been a good six months since I've had a cyst, but having this around just in case is a must for me. So I'm very thankful to have this. And I would love to know if you do have acne prone skin and you have tried this, I would love to know your experience with it down below because I, I from what I've heard from everybody freaking loves this product. It's a fantastic product. Next on our list, let's get into brows. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze Extreme Hold Laminated Look Sculpting Wax. It is $23 and it is a full size. And does it have a sticker on it that's preventing me from opening it maybe? I don't know what's happening here. Ugh. What the world? I don't see a sticker on it. I legit can't get this open. I can't get it open. Doesn't feel like there's a sticker on it. I can't feel anything that's preventing me from opening this. I'm gonna have to take this to my husband because I legit cannot get this open. All right, I'll be right back. Five minutes later. All right, oh my gosh, you guys. I told him, I should have had him come down and show you how hard this thing was to open. My, have you ever seen, have you ever seen my husband? This is what my husband looks like, okay? He works out every day. He's a strong dude and he could not get this open. He had to legit use these things and grab it like this and open it. It was, that's not okay. That's not okay at all. But now that it's open, let's talk about it a little bit. So this is a full size. Let's talk about the ingredients. Now, I don't know a ton about brow products, like holding brow products and what like makes them hold, but this is what the deal is. Water in the top and then Satira 30. And the deal with that is it's used in a lot of cleansers and not just face cleansers, but also in shampoos. It's also used in household cleansers. And its job is to kind of hold the product on the, on the, appliance. So if you're like cleaning the inside of a toilet, then it helps the product to stay on the outside of the toilet so that you can then scrub it. So that's the only thing I can think of that's what's making this hold anything. I don't know. It's weird. Then there's uh, sorbitol, which is a sugar substitute. I would imagine that most of that is for thickening, not really for much else. It could be moisturizing, but it seems like that's probably a thickener. And then uh, propanadiol, which is another thickener, also could be be a moisturizer. I think they're pretty, probably just texture ingredients. Uh, and then glycerin, which is a humectant to pull water into the skin. So I don't, my point is, is I don't see like any waxes or anything you typically see in other brow products in here. So I don't really know how it's holding things. I'm curious to see what the texture is going to be like. Initial touching of it, it does feel like it's going to be sticky. Oop, that was loud. It's a very interesting texture because it doesn't quite feel like lip gloss. It doesn't quite feel like anything I've felt in the makeup space. It's kind of like if you melted down a gummy bear. That's kind of what it feels like, but there's no stick to it. Very odd. So before we put these in, I need to get my face to the point where I need to put on brow products. So here we go. One, two, three. 
All right, we are back. So all I did was put on foundation and then I put on my Makeup by Mario brow pencil. So what they say you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a little bit of the product like this and you're supposed to put it into the back of the cap and then roll your spoolie on it and then brush it through your brow. So that's what we're going to do. And it definitely feels thick, like, like melted plastic almost. And I'm going to go ahead and brush this through. And I do really like the feathered brow look, so we'll see. It's definitely going in nice and easily. The question is, is, is it going to hold my brows? So it does feel a little bit wet. There's no scent to it at all, which I really like. I found that their regular brow gel has a strong alcohol scent, and I don't like that. And I think my brows look cute. Very nice. Looks a little weird right now without any other... <laughs> makeup on. I do want to mention that I was looking at different brow formulas and one thing I noticed was that the e.l.f. cosmetics one was a similar kind of base to this one. So if you don't want to pay for the ABH one, definitely check out the one from e.l.f. It has the same water and Satira 30 in the base of it. So I mean the rest of the ingredients are quite different but the, that was the closest I could find to what this was when I was trying to figure out you know what would hold within the brow products. Now I can say right now I can definitely definitely feel it. It feels a little bit heavy, but it doesn't feel sticky at all. I can definitely feel that it's there, but I have a feeling I won't be able to feel it for very much longer. Let's go ahead and move on to the Grande Lash MD Lash Enhancing Serum. Now, this says on the website that it promotes naturally longer, thicker looking lashes in four to six weeks with full results in three months. Helps to enhance short or thinning lashes and restores the appearance of brittle or damaged lashes. So that's really important for when we're talking about this product in the small size. The full size of this is $68 and it comes out to $34 per milliliter. Now, this is a 0.7 milliliter tube of it. It's a $23.80 value. It's 35% of the full size. Now, the thing about this is this is probably about a three-month supply, maybe a little bit more. And if you remember, I was saying it takes at least three months to see any results. So you may not even see any results with this. But the geeky part is, is what is this? Why does it work? What's the deal with it? So eyelash serums work by conditioning your hair. It can also encourage hair growth and it can also encourage your lashes to stay Stay in your eyes, in your eyelids for longer. This serum has all of the ingredients that would hypothetically do all of those things if they worked properly. There's moisturizing and hydrating ingredients in here. There's B vitamins in here that may help to strengthen the hair and also to retain moisture within your lashes. And But the key ingredient in this that would help with lash growth is something called isopropyl cloprostinate. And that is a group of fatty acid compounds. There is a period of time that your lashes are growing longer and it tries to extend that time period. This is the other thing on here that may not make this worth it for you. There is a big warning on this. It says do not get this in your eyes. In event of direct contact, rinse with cool water. Do not use if you are pregnant or nursing under the age of 18, are prone to dry eyes or styes or undergoing chemotherapy. Keep out of reach of children. If redness or irritation occurs, stop using the product. Consult a physician position if you're being treated for an eye-related condition. So I don't know how it is possible to not get this in your eye to be 100% with you because what you're doing is you're putting this directly on the lash line. Let me show you. Let's move my mirror just a little bit closer so I can see what the heck I'm doing. There is no sense of this at all, which is a little bit reassuring. But what you're going to do with this is you're going to close your eye and then just apply it to your lash line but it is a water-like texture. So I don't see how it cannot get in your eye. I can feel, oh, it's getting in my eye. I can feel it burning a little bit. But my eyes are not burning anymore. And according to the directions, I should be rinsing it out right now. But if you rinse it out, then you're not going to get the effects of it. So you just kind of have to decide what your line is for this product. Personally, I don't think that this is a great product to put in this particular kit because really what they're trying to do is they're trying to gateway you into buying a full size because chances are in three months, if you use this every day, you're probably not going to get a ton of results. But what if you start seeing results, 
results, that's when you'll invest in a full size and it's expensive. What is it, $68 for one of these things? It's a lot. I have used other products like this before. I've never used the Grande Lash one and I did see some really good results from it. But if this wasn't in this kit, I probably wouldn't buy it because in my everyday, I honestly don't care if my lashes are long. If I want my lashes to look long, I just put on fake lashes. That's what I personally choose to do. So this isn't worth it to me to be in here, but I'm not everybody. So that's why I really wanted to go into it and give you information so you can decide if it's worth it for you. Next up, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's the little mini baby Natasha Denona retro palette. It's so cute. Look how cute these little colors are. They're adorable. Let us go ahead and swatch and I'll show you what they swatch like. I honestly, I really do like Natasha Denona's formula. I think she has a really nice formula. That is not blending very nicely though. That one is. That one, hmm. Not impressed with the way they swatch, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to apply poorly to the eyes. Let's see if they build. So I'm going to just swatch the mattes one more time. Yeah, that's much better. There we go. So still, it looks like that red shade is getting stuck. So I'm going to go in with a really fluffy brush on that and just slowly build that one up. As far as size goes, these are significantly smaller than, let's say, the ones in my Natasha Denona Love Palette. So these are the, the shadows here, and you can see it's significantly smaller. These are, I think, a little over a gram each, and these are 0.8 grams. Here is one of my five pan Natasha Denona palettes. This is 2.5 grams per pan. And again, this is 0.8. I mean, it's significant, the difference. Now, when I was looking this up, it looked like... I haven't bought a Natasha Nona palette in a while. Why I'm confused is because the only place I could find the amount of product per pan in the retro palette was on Temptalia's website, which she had said that they were this size. So if you own the retro palette, are they this tiny size? Are they smaller than, let's say, like the Love palette or, you know, some of the, the palettes that were this size before? Because when I calculated this getting ready for this video, I had said that the value of this was $13.80 based on what it said on Temptalia's website that these were full size shadows. But now looking at the comparison with palettes that I own that didn't come out recently, it looks like the value, if you break it down for the price that this was, which was $65 versus the current price of $69 for one of these, it's $8.11 for this particular product. So I'm, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. I need to watch more Natasha Denona reviews to see if there's like, it, did they make the size smaller? You'll have to let me know. Point is, is it somewhere, the value somewhere between about $14 to about $8 for this particular product. The other thing that was irritating about this is that this was the only product for the kit that they didn't have ingredients listed on the Sephora website. So all I did was I just kind of glanced at the box to see if there was anything that stood out. And they really are very typical eyeshadow ingredients. I mean, like talc, mica, uh, silica, which is going to give you some slip. Um, I mean, really... Nothing really going on here. There's carmine in here, which is made from crushed bugs. So if you don't like that, you don't want these. But really nothing out of the ordinary on this one. Let's go ahead and do a little look with these and see how it goes. I'm just going to quick put on my Ulta eye primer. And I'm just going to dip with a big fluffy brush into this guy right here. I'm just going to kind of slap that on just on the brow bone. Just get it really diffused. And now I'm gonna go in with one that's a little bit more dense into, actually, let's use this guy. This one right here. And it's blending much better than I expected it to based on the swatch. It's not blending away, that's good. A little bit patchy in my crease a little bit, but I have kind of a wrinkle there, so a lot of times shadows will get stuck there. Okay, that's where we're at so far. And now I'm just gonna pop this guy all over my lid. I love Natasha Denona's foiled shades. They're so pretty. Yes! 
I am not a fan of red on my lower lash line, so I'm gonna use the shimmery guy. And that is that. That is the full eye look. I feel like this look came out cute, especially for a three shadow look. I feel like I can rock this look, but this shade selection isn't going to be for everybody. I kind of wish that they had gone more like natural rather than reds, because I know that not everybody digs on red shades. So for something like this, I think a natural boring palette is probably the best. But quality wise, application wise, went on great in my opinion. All right, let us move on to a product that I have not legit not used in years. It used to be a favorite a long time ago. This is the KVD Beauty Tattoo Liner Vegan Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. The value on this is $23 because it is a full size. And when I was looking to see what was in it, I found that it's pretty boring. <laughs> it's just like water and polymers and humectants and, you know, some alcohol to help it dry down. But I mean, it's very typical. The only thing I want to mention about this is that there are parabens in this. Now, parabens, definitely look up, if you're scared of parabens, look up some actual legit medical websites and you'll learn that the paraben scare was based on false science. It was based on things that are just not real. The reason why you want to stay away from parabens is, is if you are specifically sensitive to them, which some people legit are. But if you are not sensitive to them, I personally do not see a problem in using parabens at all. It's a great preservative, works great to make sure that bacteria isn't growing in your product. Uh, so I, I don't have a problem with it, but it's up to you whether you do or not. If you have a problem with parabens, you want to stay away from this. I have heard that the newer version of this is always dried out. <laughs> That was the critique I heard, but I I haven't tried it since it switched over from Kat Von D Beauty. So let us try it now and let's see how it goes. Okay, so far so good. Winging it up. It does feel a little bit dry and I totally missed that wing. So let me see if I can fix that. Yeah, I can fix it. But it definitely doesn't seem like it's as liquidy as I remember, which actually will help with fine lines if you have, um, you know, your skin isn't as taut and you have lots of fine lines in your lids. It's actually better that it's not as wet because then it won't seep into those fine lines. But the point still feels very fine. Uh, I feel like it flicked out on the wing pretty good. Let me make this one a little bigger to match. Bloop. I feel like I'm not even. We're definitely, you know, sisters, not twins happening on the wings today. Maybe I can make this one a little bigger. Yeah, the angle is definitely off. Let me go ahead. I'm going to redo this one because I like this side better. And this side is like, it's too out. It's not high enough. These pointy Q-tips are so fab for fixing eye mistakes. And this is just a little bioderma. Any micellar water works. That removed pretty easily, that's good. It's not smudging everywhere, which is fabulous. There we go, that's better. That's what I wanted. It takes me a little while to approve a liquid liner because I want to wear it all day, but so far just application went on pretty easily. Um, but I do think that it, the wing was a little bit harder because it is a little bit drier of a formula and just getting it to that point was a little bit more difficult than I typically like, but I'm, that's just me nitpicking. It's, it seems like it's pretty good as far as application goes. Now we have another full-size product. This is the Ilia Limitless Lash Lengthening Clean Mascara. This is a full size with a price of $28. Now I've never tried this one. I did try their volumizing one and I loved it. They had, it was one of the only times I ever got Ilia PR and I was so thankful because it was such a good mascara, the volumizing one. So I'm super curious about this Limitless Lash Lengthening one. The base of this is water, beeswax, and shea butter, which is relatively typical for a mascara 
mascara, but I would imagine that the shea butter might make it easier to smudge on some people. I did find absolutely fascinating. There's a few ingredients in here, arginine, biotin, and nettle extract that could help with lash growth, which I think is pretty cool, but we don't know. I mean, it may, it may not, I don't know. But I think it's neat that they tried to put it in there. Now we do know that with mascara, sometimes when they're open for a little while, the performance changes. So this is a brand new tube. This is what the wand looks like. It is a plastic wand. I hope it's not too bristly and sharp. We will see. It's got a really funky scent. It's very plasticky specifically. And I can kind of smell the beeswax. I feel like I can smell that. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of product on here. I don't know, we'll see. I just noticed that there's a difference in the sides of the wand. So on the bottom there, I think that's for building. And then on the top, I think is for brushing it out. So let us try it. We're gonna build it first and then we'll brush it out. Mm, we're definitely not getting the volume that I got with the volumizing one. And it's definitely a little bit pokey. I mean, I'm definitely getting product on there. Let's do the brushing side. Ooh, I like that side. Definitely not impressive as far as the effect though. <laughs> Especially for the price tag got on this. Before I tried the Ilia Volumizing Mascara, I had zero hope in natural mascaras, ones that like claim to be natural. They will always crap. Every single one was like, but then that one gave me hope. So I was really hoping this one would be good. But right now, not so much. I do like the side that looks more like a comb, but I don't feel like it's doing much for my lashes. I'm going to put try to put in one more coat on this side to see if I can get it to build it all. I'm getting a little bit of volume, but like hardly any length at all. I mean, I guess a little bit, but it's definitely not impressive in any way. This would definitely not be a purchase. If I paid $28 for this, I would not be happy. I'm trying to brush out the clumps with the comb, but it's not really working. I feel like it's still clumping. Okay, let me turn off the lights because I think that you might be able to see it better. Like, can you see this side? Like, I feel like that's where you can really see kind of what we're dealing with. I don't know. Out of, out of 10, I would probably give this a 5. Definitely not worth the price on this one. Unless you have like lots of lashes and they're already kind of long, you'll probably really like this because you don't want a ton anyway because you already got a lot. But for me, for my little wimpy lashes, this isn't going to be good enough for me, unfortunately. Next up, we have a Baby Rare Beauty blush. It's $20 for a full size of this, and this is a 3.2 milliliter, which is a mini. This is about an $8.53 value here. It's, it's about 43% of full size. Ironically, <laughs> I do already have this shade in the full size, so you can see the difference between the two. Now, this I bought at launch, and I heard from y'all, because I was complaining about this, that it was way too pigmented, hard to blend, all of that, that the the new one was different, that it was easier to blend. So let us test that. We're gonna go ahead and put the old one on this side and we're gonna blend that out first and then see if this one blends a little bit better. Let's do it. I'm gonna turn my mirror back on and see if they're the same or different. So one drop there and let us bounce. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I never wanted to use this because it is out of freaking control. Like what is even happening there? That was one drop, one freaking drop. All right, let me try the other side of the beauty blender and see if I can kind of get it to blend out. I look like I have a sunburn out of freaking control. Okay, let me try to blend it with my fingertips a little bit. Try to get some of this. Okay, in my monitor, it looks worse than it does in my mirror here. So I'm hoping that it will not look as bad on camera as I think that it does. <laughs> Cause it looks really bad. Like it looks like I bl brought it a little too far this way too. Let me get my foundation brush and try to blend it a little bit over here to kind of cover up a little bit. Cause I think I went too far that way. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's like, that's not enjoyable for me to look like that. It's, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try the new one. This is the little guy that came in the kit and we're gonna put one drop there. Just the tiniest little bit and let's see what happens. 
I'm gonna flip it so that it's a clean part of the blender. Oh my gosh, look, it's so much better. Oh, it's so much better. So much better. Do you see the difference? Maybe it's also, is the doe foot bigger? I'm gonna have to look at that in a second. I think I even need another drop. Put a little drop back there. Oh, so much better. They must have changed it. Because look, they did change it. They had to have. Watch Rare Beauty contact me and be like, no, we didn't change it. But I swear it's different. But I think also it might be just the amount of product that picked up on the two doe foots too. Because if you look, I mean, the one, the full size doe foot is way, way bigger. So that might be the issue as well. So there's so many factors that are just not controlled in that little study. But I do like this little guy better than I like this guy. And they are the exact same shade. Let me turn that off so you can see. I think it looks fine. Still not my favorite. Still not my favorite liquid blush. But I know a lot of people love these. I've heard Lasting Power is fantastic. So, you know. I was so excited. I forgot to talk about the geeky stuff. Goodness gracious. All right, Jen. We talk about ingredients. It's a horribly boring ingredient <laughs> list. It's just like a lot of emollient texture kinds of things that are happening. Mica, stuff like that. Uh, first ingredient is a mineral oil substitute that's called hydrogenated polyisobutene. That's the, uh, the oily kind of feel when you put this on. That's what that is. But the thing that's great about that is it's often used as a waterproofing agent in sunscreens. And there are quite a few ingredients in here that are supposed to make makeup last longer. So that's super cool. And then they have the rare beauty cocktail of things that they put, seem to be putting in all of their products. It's the sunflower seed oil, which I love. Very, very moisturizing. Gardenia Florida fruit extract, which is an antioxidant. It's also a fragrance though, so keep that in mind. The sacred lotus flower extract uh, might have skin soothing antioxidant properties, stuff like that. And then the pygmy water lily extract, that's an antioxidant. And they put that in their lip products and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, for me personally, I'm really thankful to have tried the new version of it because I do like it better than the way that this one went on. But am I super excited for everybody to try this? Not really, just because I feel like the color is very bright and bold and definitely not for everybody. I wish they had done one that wasn't quite so orange. And also people are, may not know that you really need to go in light with it. So for you. <laughs> Just make sure you go in light with it, build it up, uh, and you may love it. I, I personally, it's not my favorite liquid blush formula, but I don't hate it. have one of my favorites and I'm actually out of the original gloss bomb color so I'm very excited to have another one of these this is one of my favorite lip glosses of all time this is the Fenty gloss bomb universal lip luminizer in Fenty glow it's the original shade it smells so good to me, it smells like cherries. I love the smell of this. I love the doe foot. The doe foot is so soft and beautiful. It just feels really good on the lips. For value on this, it is $20 for a full size of this. You, this is a deluxe size, so it's $12.22 worth of product, and it is 61% of a full size, which I think is nice. It's a nice amount. So the question is now, what is in this? a lot of emollients, a lot of mushy gushy things. That's what a lot of lip glosses are made out of. They don't usually have a ton of skincare-y kinds of ingredients in them. This one is no different. Uh, the 10th ingredient is shea butter. So you finally get down to some moisturizing ingredients way down there. Mostly it's emollients, waxes, copolymers, stuff like that. Uh, there is fragrance in here, including benzoyl benzoate, which some people are sensitive to. So keep that in mind. There's also limonene in here that some people are sensitive to. Uh, but if you're not, you know, you just have to kind of decide how you feel about fragrance. Let me go ahead and put it on for you because it is just a really beautiful product. It is a little bit heavy. You can really feel it on the lips, but it's not sticky at all. This is a lip gloss that if your hair, if you have long hair, it's blowing in the wind, it's gonna get stuck in your lip gloss and it's gonna uh, But I mean, that's relatively typical for lip gloss. There's very few that I feel won't do that, but this is a more heavy lip gloss, very occlusive. And I think it's just a universal pretty shade. You can wear it on its own. You can wear it on top of lipstick. It's just a beautiful product. And then finally, one more thing. I'm biting the bullet for y'all. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> 
this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. So, of course, this is not a full size. Uh, $33 for 118 milliliters of this product. This is only 15 milliliters. It is a $4.19 value for this product. It's only 13% of the full size. Now, what is this made out of? Very important to note here that setting sprays typically have alcohol in them because that is what makes setting sprays work is the alcohol. But alcohol can dry the skin, especially if you're using it every single day. And I was looking at professional websites about setting sprays in preparation for this video because I don't wear setting sprays. I don't like spraying things on my face. It makes, it's awful. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. I hate it so much. So because of that, I don't know a ton about setting sprays. And most of the professional websites that I read about setting sprays said specifically, you really shouldn't use them every single day. Save it four times when you really need your makeup to last a long time. The base of this is water, followed by alcohol, followed by PVP, which is a kind of plastic. It's a major ingredient a lot in those peel-off masks that you use, but of course it's not gonna be to that extent in something like this because it's a liquid. And then there's dimethicone in here, which is an ingredient that I find in primers and things will help makeup last longer. So it's, I mean, it's a legit setting spray. It's got all of the ingredients you need in there in order to make Make your makeup last longer to be what it's supposed to be but if your skin starts to feel like it's getting dried out you may want to pass on this and if you have oily skin and you find that your skin is producing more oil after using this then you definitely want to stop using it because your skin might be thinking oh i my skin is dry i need to produce more oil and that's not a good thing either so just kind of keep an eye on your skin when you're using something like this and make sure that you're not experiencing anything weird from it as far as other ingredients in here there is isononyl isononyl we've talked about that before uh, that is an ingredient that's especially good for protecting dry skin. So that's going to help fight against that alcohol. There's also in here a uh, propanediol, which uh, is a moisturizer among other things. And then also this one that I'm not going to pronounce because my brain is just not there today. <laughs> that might give a little bit of a cooling effect on the skin. I'll let you know if I feel it in a second. There's also aloe leaf juice, which is skin soothing, and then maltodextrin, which can help with a mattifying effect. So let me use this. I've never used this product because I hate setting sprays, but we're going to use it today because it's part of the video. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate the way it feels. The sprayer is pretty nice though. The spray, I, I hate when there's like wet, like wet here, but not here. Like I don't like the way it feels, but the sprayer wasn't bad. The sprayer's not bad on it. It doesn't have a super strong scent. I don't really feel very much of a cooling sensation, maybe a tiny bit where it's still drying down, but it's not bad at all. And I've heard great things about this product. Everybody that uses this product tells me it works great. So take that for what you will. I don't like setting spray. <laughs> So I'm going to pass this on to somebody that does, but so this doesn't add to the value of it for me personally, but I know it's going to add to the value for a lot of people. So let us now do a little in conclusion. This is my final look from this kit. Really the only two things that I used that were not from this kit was my foundation, which is the Sephora Best Skin Ever foundation and my brow product, which is the Makeup by Mario brow pencil. So again, this is a $54 kit. Total value I calculated to $149.54. That is based on Temptalia's calculation for how big those pans are in those Natasha Denona products. If you go by how big the pans are in the palettes that I have. It's a little bit less than that, maybe a dollar or two, but very close to that $150 mark either way. If you break this down per product, it ends up being $6 per product. The way that I feel like is best to look at this is if you are getting your dollar's worth as far as the products that you truly, truly want or truly want to try. So if you want to try at least two of the more expensive value items and at least one of the lower cost items, you're getting your money's worth from this. If you just want the lower cost items, then it's not going to add up to the value unless you just did didn't want to buy the full size products and you want to try these before you invest in a full size. I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, really look at the values that are on the screen right now. I think they're over here. Look at the values that are on the screen right now and then decide, add them up and decide whether
whether it's worth it for you personally. Because like for me, this is kind of how I feel about it. I actually like the Anastasia Brow product more than I thought. I could pass on the Rare Beauty. I love the Fenty. Yes. Don't use setting sprays. No. Ilia, no. Uh, tattoo liner, I'll use it, but I'm not super excited about it. Grande Lash... I don't think it's worth it in this kit. I'm not going to pay the $68. I know me. I'm not going to pay it. So that's going to be a no for me. If I didn't have a huge makeup collection, I would say absolutely yes on the Natasha Denona. Let's pretend yes on the Natasha Denona. And then for the exfoliator, it's going to depend on who you are. I mean, for me, I'm very thankful to have it because I am getting the occasional, you know, hormonal acne going on. And also my hoo-ha sometimes needs a little bit of help, which is my out-of-the-box thinking on that. So for me, the ABH, the Fenty, the exfoliator, and the Tasha Denona, that's for me. So for me, this is worth it. But you have to decide whether it's worth it for you. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your personal breakdown of this kit, whether you think it's worth it to you or not, why or why not, because we are all different and that's what the collective brain is all about. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. It does tell YouTube to share it with other people. And if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer. YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including one that I picked out for you special. It's on the bottom. YouTube picked the top one for you. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.